let me know if you can hear me or if the audio is any good or not. I've never done a live, so I'm not too sure how this is going to look. Mm, budget. Okay, I think you guys can hear me. I got a thumbs up, so I think that means that's good. Send an emoji if you can hear me, because I'm not even sure how this is going to pop up on the, like how your guys' comments will pop up on the screen, but hi, happy new year. How are you guys doing? Um, my new year's was very boring. I didn't feel very good yesterday, so I ended up just going to sleep, and I didn't even bring in the new year's at all. <laughs> I was watching CNN for a little bit, and then I was like, yeah, no, not into it, not into the, the two head talking type thing, so that's okay i'm not expecting a ton of people to show up to this mostly because the channel is incredibly small still and uh secondly because it's new year's day and where i am it's very very nice outside it's very very warm outside so there's probably not a ton of people that want to go outdoors i tried to go live at one but there's like a whole setup process you have to do and you have to gain like and okay essentially from YouTube so I it didn't work out very well the first time um, so I just rescheduled it for two and that's also another reason why I don't expect a ton of people to show up but that's okay Jack is sitting on my lap because I'm sitting on the floor in front of my fireplace because it's incredibly uh, it's it's relatively cold outside so um, yeah He's going to be purring, so hopefully you can't hear his purrs too, too loudly on the, on the mic. If you can, then let me know. Um, I don't... Oh, yeah, okay. Egghead Shelly, I can see you. Okay. Hi. I did. I totally slept through the countdown. Totally done. But I did bring, just in case no one asks any questions... I brought some stuff to the table. Um, first off, it's just gonna be mostly updates on my videos in the past and things that you guys have questions about. So, happy New Year's cake pop sisters. Um, this is like all the, you guys are all the veterans that are showing up right now, that's awesome. You guys are the guys, people who've been here since the beginning. Kayleen from the land of Ottawa. I'm in Saskatchewan, so yeah. Um, yeah, so, First update would be the tomato experiment I did where I had organic and then I did a hack garden where I used eggshells, banana peels, all that stuff. And then I did a conventional and then I did a control garden. And I had a lot of you guys asking what was the outcome of that? How did it work out? Which garden performed the best? And honestly, it was the control and the conventional one. They did equally as well. Um, the conventional garden did a bit better, mostly because there's just immediate available nutrients there. Um, the organic and the hack series one didn't do as good. And I honestly don't think it's because organic's less superior. I think it actually was because I got a really bad batch of manure that I actually put on my tomatoes and I did a top dress method with my compo or with my manure because I don't like to rototill. I try to keep it as close to no dig as possible. I do minimal till would be kind of what it's called. And so I, there must have been something in it because it was acting very, very funny when I was watering it and it would suds almost, which makes me think that there was some sort of surfactant in the manure to help wetting it. Because if manure dries out too much or compost dries out too much, it actually becomes hydrophobic. So when I wet my manure, it would sud, which makes me think that it had some sort of a surfactant or a soap in it that actually really impeded my tomato growth entirely. So. I didn't want to do a video and say, oh, conventional and my control, which had no fertilizer, no nothing, was the best because I actually think that my organic trial just didn't work out the way I needed it to or the way I wanted to completely based on the manure that I had and some issues I had with it. Um, with the garden hack one, I... <laughs> 
I had the bananas caused a lot of root rot in probably four of my plants and I did the whole like wrap the roots in the banana with the eggshell right at the bottom and I got root rot in probably five or six of them they completely died off and then the other ones that I had um, they did okay but again it just wasn't anything mind-blowing or crazy yield wise or otherwise now the reason why i didn't want to say that that's completely debunked and useless is because that area for whatever reason this year i have a tree that's kind of over it and it wasn't getting a lot of sun so the fact that i did the garden hack one which i need the sun to be able to decompose a lot of the stuff in the soil to begin with combined with the fact that it was shady and a cooler area in the yard just makes me think it's not a great it's not a great example. So because I'm a scientist, because I like trials and all that stuff, I didn't want to be like, yeah, this is a matter of fact what's gonna happen. So I only wanna give you guys good info. And honestly, my experiment just crashed and burned hard for two of the trials I was doing. Uh, but between conventional and my control, which had no fertilizer, the conventional did win out. So applying some form of fertilizer uh, in a, in a raised bed or in the garden, in the pots, whatever, obviously is going to help in some effect. And that's all the only conclusions I can draw from it. So there's quite a few new people. I'm gonna get to your questions here in a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of let all the comments, questions and stuff pile up. And then we'll go through them at the end. I just brought some talking points about some videos from the past that you may or may not have seen. And I'm just kind of following up on them. So if you're cool with that, give that a thumbs up give the video a thumbs up. If not, then let me know if I get enough stop and just pay attention to me comments, then I will for sure change my ways. So happy new year's, Adora. Happy new year's, Leslie, Lisa, Lisa. Oh my goodness. Oh, Gatno, you're from Quebec. I had some people that actually DM me and I feel so bad. They're in Europe or other places of the world, Philippines, things like that. And they couldn't come to the live because they're like, that's two o'clock my time, two o'clock AM my time. So unfortunately. So the second one is actually, I fell into a cult surprisingly enough. That one video I did on Super Thrive slash Marifil Holy man, you guys, you have to go check out the comment section there. People are wild about that stuff. It's honestly like a cult mentality. Um, so people who are in love with it are in love with it. And they didn't want to hear the science side of it. And they were, they were super against it, super against the video. So there's lots of name calling and stuff in the comment section. And I guess I want to apologize. Um, this, my, my comments on Marifel Super Thrive, all those products was completely based on what's in the bottle and what they state to be in the bottle. Not so much anything to do with um, years of use. I'd only been using it for two months. I didn't really see any results. So that is kind of crazy. Some people are super passionate about that product. I had no idea. Um, so yeah, you guys have to go look at that. It's wild. Uh, variegation. So I did a video a little while ago about variegated Monstera plants being found in Lowe's, Home Depot, just general box stores. And I had quite a few emails and, uh, Instagram posts, like people finding me on Instagram and letting me know that they had actually found, uh, variegated uh, Monstera at a box store and they actually sent me photos so there was only one that I saw that was potentially mosaic virus or something something odd was going on the rest were legitimately variegated Monsteras they were variegated from essentially the rhizome all the way through the stem up into the leaf it had the variegated uh, strip on it so it's possible. You can find a variegated monster at a box store. I find that wild, but it must be that they just have huge, essentially warehouses set up like the like, greenhouses 
and they just have you know teenagers or whoever boxing this stuff out to go up to go out to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever the case is and so they do slip through the cracks so if you ever want to get a variegated Monstera then I would actually probably check out box store so that update is crazy um oh so I got a lot of comments where people were confused or they were almost taking what I was saying for the Bible, <laughs> like what I was saying was gospel. And if you're watching this, I would think that you're probably relatively loyal to the channel um, since you decided to show up for this live. Thank you so much. Um, one thing I will say is when I say stuff about gardening or plant care or soil science or products, it's very rarely a hard and fast fact. It's generally based in it. It's based, it's generally based in a hypothesis or what the science says right now. Because I am a scientist, a soil scientist, what I say always, I'm always open to interpretation. I'm always open to different views, different results, new studies, new science coming out. So nothing I say is a hard and fast rule. It's just what we know to date about certain uh, physics of the soil, chemistry of the soil, nutrients of the soil, uh, certain diseases, cure for diseases, all that stuff. So when I say something, don't take it literally. I always try to, and I, I don't do it enough, but I always try to reiterate the fact that what my videos are a guideline or a way to help you learn. So I'm giving you information that you can then take, digest, and use in your own home, for example. So when I tell you to do something, try it, see if it works for you. If it does not work for you, then try something different. Look for someone else's opinion. And a really good example of something so simple as that is I don't believe in a watering or a fertilizing schedule. That is something I firmly do not believe in. And the reason for that is because it completely depends on so many different factors, such as your lighting, the type of pot you even have it in, whether that pot's plastic, ceramic, Maybe it's terracotta, maybe it's a coated ceramic, maybe it's coated terracotta. All those things matter. The pressure and the elevation of where you are, oddly enough, affects the growth of your plant, how quickly your plant takes up moisture, whether or not it goes into a slowdown period or whether it continually grows all year long, um, all the way to things like ambient humidity in your home. So many Canadians right now are probably noticing a dormancy effect on their plants or you're noticing browning or you're dropping a lot of leaves or you might have plants that are completely dying off. This is because our humidity just plummets in the winter time and if you don't have a humidifier or some way of injecting humidity into your home, plants do tend to suffer. So that's just a really good example of when I say I'm giving you the tools to determine what to do, I'm not giving you hard fast facts and you must follow me religiously and if you don't you're gonna fail so I just wanted to say that as well but other than that that's all I have for updates so I'm gonna jump into the comment section if you guys have any questions be sure to put them up on the screen oh you guys are just all just loving me that's all you're doing happy new year's happy new year's Goo from Brazil. Oh, wow. My videos are helping you learn English. That's crazy. <laughs> Canadian English. I'll be sure to say A a lot, and then you'll be like a Brazilian <laughs> saying A all the time. That's, I'm just going to work that right into your natural language. I'll be stalking box stores. No, seriously. I've, I can't believe what I saw. I've seen. Go, go, gadget, grow tent with humidifier. Yeah, that would, oh, that'd be the dream team right there. Tea water to water your plants. Okay, so that's a good, I see your cake pop sisters as well. 
Um, so I'll answer all those. So what are your thoughts on using tea water to water your plants? That's a really good question. So there's, when you say tea water, there's like the tea, obviously like Lipton, that sort of thing. Um, and then you have like the tea that people talk about where they have like the mason jar and they put banana peels or stuff in there to kind of ferment and sit for a little while and kind of build up a tea. I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but they're both essentially the same thing. Um, there's no issue with it. You feel free to do so. It's not going to harm your plants at all if you do choose to use a tea to water your plants. What I will say is a majority of the color that you're probably thinking is nutrients or you're thinking is some sort of normal green tea. Okay, yeah. So the, the change in color isn't so much a nutrient or a nutrient compound that's going to benefit your plant. It is a, it's actually tannic acid for the most part. So it's a tannin, um, which is just coloration from the leaves. And you will see this actually uh, very commonly in freshwater fish tanks. If someone puts a driftwood into a freshwater fish tank and you were to take a scoop out of a saltwater tank or a tank that doesn't have driftwood in it, and then a, a scoop out of a freshwater tank that has driftwood in it, you're gonna notice a yellow or a change in color and that's actually tannin or tannic acid. And tea's not going to alter so much your nutrient in your, your soil or for your plant, but what it could do is actually can alter your pH. Now, what pH is going to change it to? Um, it's probably gonna push it more neutral. I know I say tannic acid and you immediately think, well, I'm adding acid to my soil, so it's gonna drop my, my pH. It's not always the case. It's probably gonna neutralize it to around a six or a seven. Um, the thing is, is for you to keep those benefits is you would have to keep your soil suspended in solution at a pH of seven based on the tea that you're watering with. Meaning you would always have to water with tea. And then so long as your soil was fully saturated with your green Lipton tea at that time, you would be able to maintain that pH of six or seven. And therefore you would actually unlock some nutrients for your plants. So nutrient wise, there's nothing. I don't think it's going to, um, you're not gonna see any rapid growth. What you will see though, is if you have a really degraded potting soil currently, or um, you're using a peat moss or a coconut coir that actually does have a really low pH, you may actually see it come up a bit and you may affect your, your cation exchange capacity and how much nutrients is bioavailable to the plant. So, I mean, there's you're not gonna harm anything by doing it. Um, and there may be, depending, there may just be some on a microscopic level, you may be fueling um, some microbes in your soil. So that's one thing I'm a firm believer on is um, keeping your soil alive. I don't believe in baking soil. I don't believe in heating or sterilizing soil. Um, it's not in your best interest to do so. If you have mold, leave it hang out. It's really good for your soil. Actually water with Luke, like if it is a tea, you have the opportunity to actually water your plants with a lukewarm water. You can let it cool down a little bit from boiling, but you will have that base warmth that you can then water with, which it will do miracles, not only for your, your tropical plants, but any plant for that matter, especially seedlings, um, your microbes and all that stuff. It's just, it's like a cozy warm blanket. So that's a good question. Okay, so. Any advice on philodendrons with mushy leaves after treating for thrips? Did you use a soap based or like an end all cake pop? I'm wondering, cause I've had this happen too. And it's some philodendrons don't like end all and they don't like certain insecticidal soaps and I'm not sure 100% why that is. Now it's hard to say but it makes me think that the insecticide is kind of sitting 
where so you have your rhizome coming up and then you have your leaf coming off so what i think is happening is it's actually rotting out where the the rhizome touches the leaf on it actually i have one behind me that's going through this exact issue yeah okay so this guy here i don't even think i showed him on my plant tour sorry but you see how this is really mushy so this was a leaf and what i think is happening is um actually this is ready to fall out see how this is rotted at the base so what i think happened is that the issue is actually happening right here on on the rhizome coming out i think the issue is happening here what happens is it rots out this base first and then the results you see are actually on the top of the leaf but I think it's from pesticide or whatever you're using insecticidal soap sitting in here, like right at this base and it not drying out fast enough. So what I would do is if you decide to spray your plant down for thrips or for anything is to then put a fan on it or take a paper towel and actually dab right on the internode or right on the node area where the leaf is connecting to the rhizome and see if you can soak up any extra water because i notice it happens mostly and i'm not sure if this is your situation cake pop but what i notice naturally is that the rot is happening at the base and i think it's because there's actually moisture sitting there and if you're not uh if you don't have fans and you don't normally miss your plants what may end up happening is that's just the one time where you you spray it down and you think well oh this is because i decided to uh spray insecticide on it and the insecticide killed the plant which should not be the case i think it's actually the moisture sitting in that that junction there that's actually causing the rot and if that helps you out at all um I really enjoy your review videos. Would you do more reviews in the future? Yeah. Um, are you talking more so like everything or is it specific to soil amendments, all like that sort of thing? Because I have intentions of still going through all the different types of soil amendments. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on something you actually want me to review, let me know. I have no problem going out and buying miracle Grow succulent mix, which I ended up just dumping into the vat with all my sunshine mix four. I like mix four and just kind of mixing into that. So um, I have no problem reviewing that sort of stuff for you guys at all. I love that sort of stuff. I love anything that's like soil testing, all that. What I will say is my reviews are probably going to be less than thrilling. I don't. <laughs> I do not believe in a lot of uh, it's not that I don't believe in it, but I think there's a lot of money grabs out there and I think that there's just uh, people are seeing dollar signs when it comes to plants, whether that be house plants or gardens. Um, and they're making all these products like crazy, crazy. And all the products are resulting in a mass influx of useless things. So I'm more than happy to go through some of that stuff with you guys. Uh, a lot of the time when it comes to potting soil, for example, a lot of them are identical and I swear they get them all, it all comes from the same place. Uh, very rarely will I say that one brand's better than the other. So I have no affiliation with any brand. So it's a very blank slate when it comes to me reviewing this stuff. And I'm going to tell you the truth. So for the most part, I'm not, I will never recommend something that I don't actually truly believe in. And that actually goes for the Amazon store I set up. For the channel it may only be available to canadians i'm not sure i try to link as many american links as I've, i possibly can but for the canadian canadians i have a store and in the store i only put products that i truly believe work and stuff that i actually use i refuse to put any product in there that i think will just sell so that's a fun fact Canadian product reviews. Yes, I believe in that. So I did Kodiak, one the Kodiak boots. That's why I worked with them as they're Canadian. They sell into America, but 
They are a Canadian company and I love those boots so, so much. Uh, do you have any experience with LED replacement tubes for T5 fluorescence? Okay, so T5 is really small. Uh, T5 is what I'm running currently on that. When I do my videos, you know how there's like that wood uh, shelving unit behind me? So those have T5s. And I know you can get T8 replacement bulbs. And I'm not sure if you can get LED T5s. However, I have replaced um, a T8 with the LED strips before. And it, it does make a huge difference and it acts identical to um, an LED like box light. So it's the same thing. It works identical to that. For T5 though, I'm not sure ballast wise if that exists. If it did, it would work. One thing I will say is if you have a T5 ballast and it's not working for you anymore, you're not noticing results, you may have to actually change the light bulb unto itself and just get a fluorescent one. So I know for my T5 grow lights that over time, they kind of become less effective. And I'm not sure, I'm not a good light person, but I'm not sure if it's the gas inside is depleting, so the intensity is going down. I'm not sure how that works, but I do notice that if I don't change my T5s once every two years, or depending on how much I'm running them every year or six months, if I'm going really hard on them, that I will notice a degradation in the plants and how they're growing. However, with LED, I don't notice that at all and I don't ever feel like I have to replace them. So I'm, if there's a light person, please help. Because, oh, it sounds like there is, <laughs> sounds like there is a crazy light person in here. Bones Eye Photography. So... <laughs> I really hate Miracle Girl Succulent Mix. Thanks for your review. So the reason why Adora is saying this is because, you correct me if I'm wrong, Adora, this was how you found my channel was actually my review on this soil. <laughs> so she commented and she's like, I'm pretty sure this stuff killed my succulents. So it's, it's a heavy mix. And then the craziest part is that I've had people after that after I did that review, say that, well, no, when I tried it, it was completely fine. It didn't have any of the same issues. It was actually very chunky and it had wood chips in it. So it seems like they changed their formula or they're changing their, um, who they're sourcing from. So maybe they're, or they're getting deeper in their, their peat moss bog. So the lower in the bog they go, the more non-decomposed material so the higher likelihood you're going to get things like branches and wood chips and all that stuff in it so it's a very heavy soil very heavy soil it's not for succulents it's not for honestly it's not for canadian uh gardeners whatsoever it's just way too heavy somewhere like california maybe but here eh, not so much i've replaced Purchase a replacement for my T5, but conversation is, conversion, conversation, conversion is awkward looking, yeah. Yeah, so like, like Bones Eye Photography is saying, he bought a replacement for the T5, but the, converse, the conversion for it is awkward. And I believe that because it's so tiny. And it just makes me think like, how are you gonna get that strip through? It's really, really hard to say, but if you can do it, it works. I've done it with T8s, but that is quite, quite a bit thicker. The actual tube is quite a bit thicker. So I'm not sure. So they're having a whole conversation about lights that I know nothing about. Do you know what spectrum LED you found to provide good growth? Um, 
Yes. Off the top of my head, do I have it? No. But after this, I will go grab my uh, sheet for it. It is, now it depends on how, what your setup is. So if you have it in a grow light or in a grow tent versus just like out in a living room, that's going to have a huge factor um, as well as the height or the distance from the actual plant that you have. So, um, and what you're growing too. So just let me know, grow tent or no grow tent, um, the type of plant you're trying to grow or plants, range of plants that you're trying to grow. And then also the distance that you think you're going to have it from. Because one thing I will say with my Mars Hydro, so my TS-1000 that I have, is that it works unbelievably well, but it's too intense for a huge portion of my tropical plants, um, but also some of my herbs and stuff like that. So I actually bought another one that's a lot less intense. Um, it has more blue and red lights in it um, rather than like the full white. So that one isn't doing as much damage, that's for sure. And it was a heck of a lot cheaper. So, um, Bon, my name is Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. I like your alien, by the way. Every time you comment on all my videos, I'm like, oh, it's the alien. Miracle girl, upside down, smiley face. Hello from London, UK. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Holy man, what time is it there? My cousin lives in, in London. I don't know where he lives in London, but he lives in London. He's an accountant there. I would have thought that it's very, very late there. Um, Full-size lettuce. So I'm a photographer. Oh, that's cool. So full size lettuce, um, for the lettuce that you probably could get away with all, almost anything, honestly. Um, if you're doing like an indoor lettuce bar or any sort of herbs, they really don't need much light. And not only that, your, it's only 8.30 PM. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, so if you, you can use any light and actually the lower intensity the light is the better because you're going for vegetative growth and you don't want anything to set seeds so if you're looking for something that's not going to bolt um then yeah i would go with that other thing i would look into is making sure that you're not your ballast whatever you're doing with the ballast doesn't overheat if you have it in any sort of enclosed room or in like any sort of grow tent or anything like that because that will cause it to bolt and get very, very leggy. And that is one thing that I did notice in, in my grow tent as well. Thoughts on using hair as a soil amendment? I've got lots. You can ask, uh, ask anyone. My hair rush is always full. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's it's probably gonna add aeration to your soil. It's gonna act kind of like um, a root, a root hair. It's not gonna add any crazy nutrients or anything. And it obviously will degrade over time, but there's no reason you can't do it. And the birds will really love you for it. <laughs> that's, that's also true. Do you think of winter sowing in plastic jugs and containers? Okay, so, I don't know if you're talking about the starting, like when you've started outside and you make like the mini greenhouses, or if you're talking about just chopping the top off and then putting soil and seed starting in there. But what I will tell you is that you can do the mini greenhouse style, depending on where you are. Um, if you do the mini greenhouse out in the garden, what I will say is leave the tops on if it's really cold out. But the moment it starts heating up, make sure you pop the tops off. The other thing you can do, um, depending on how motivated you are, you could do um, a small Christmas light. So like do a chain of Christmas lights and you could place 
it, it, they can't be LED, they have to be the incandescent, like the ones that throw off a little bit of heat. Um, you could put that underneath the milk jug and then put the plastic top on top. That is enough heat to actually keep some of your colder crops growing all year round. So my fiance is bugging me from behind the camera. Everybody say hi. I have someone on here from the UK right now. He's proud of me. So yeah, mini greenhouses, give it a shot. Um, you can't obviously do it till it gets a little bit warmer out. So that's any recommendations for free apps for identifying plants? Oh, that's such a good question. And I honestly wish I did. Um, there isn't a lot. There's one and you're not from here. So I, not gonna even work for you but um there is that grow it app yes so there's one it's called iNaturalist and if you are from Canada I actually implore you to download it it's called iNaturalist and what it is is it's something that's put on by Parks Canada and what it does essentially is you take photos or videos and you upload it to your profile. It's kind of like a Facebook profile, but not really. And um, if you can identify it, then you identify it as what you believe it to be. If not, there's a group of people that actually uh, will tell you what plant it is. And it's used by ecologists, um, reclamation, a whole bunch of different groups, like a whole bunch of different groups of scientists actually use it. Universities will use it to help look at what plants are growing where, whether it's native vegetation or non-native vegetation, how it's growing, where it's growing. So even if it's for house plants, I'm sure you could upload to that and there would be horticulture groups that would look at that and determine um, how stuff grows in Canada. So it's a really good resource. Um, I play, like it's meant for, I, I mean, they do it for kids mostly because I've used it for uh, Saskatchewan parks and you do like the nature trail and you try to identify so many different plants and stuff. It's lots of fun and it actually helps uh, scientists, universities, all that stuff out. Happy New Year from Zone 9B. Nice. That's, it's got to be warm there still. 9B. Are you in BC or Ontario? Now you're from one of those places. I bought those nematodes for fungus. However, you have to keep them wet for a few days. Yes. So it says that. It says that you have to water it every day. What I do is I just take, um, I put it on my soil and then I just put like a light moss like a sphagnum moss mat over top of it just to keep it moist if it if I notice it's drying out or if I'm extra lazy I will take um like cling wrap and I'll just like plop it over top of the pot and kind of just put a ponytail around the bottom or I'll kind of wrap it around the bottom so then it just sits on top and it captures the moisture it's going to degrade or it's going to stop um, your rate of evapotranspiration. So you're going to need to take it off eventually. Otherwise you're going to shock or potentially harm your plant, but it will give you enough time for those suckers to grow. The other thing that I find helps is not bottom watering and actually top watering. When you put those little egg things, they kind of look like eggs on the top of the soil. If you water, it actually will force them in some cases, depending on how, um, aggregated your soil is, will force those balls farther down into the profile so they'll stay a little bit more moist that's kind of like one of the biggest downfalls of the whole oh yeah cling wrap yeah it's like yeah ugh. it's one of the downfalls of that product that's for sure uh okay well in sewing which are sewing for a few years works great yeah see it does it does work good I'm just so cold here that honestly, like right now it's minus 12 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's going to keep going down. And January, February, March, it can be minus 30 
without the windshield here and it's just it's a lot happy new year it's tri psych truth seekers here she's been here for ages we're sisters from another mister um hola from new york hey 7b new york new york i didn't even get to see your ball drop this year i fell asleep uh, this tap water effect nematodes new no. they are literally they are just yeah nematodes will survive anything they are little soldiers they are actually one of the microbes on the face of the planet that are have been known to survive high high heats very very cold colds and some of the most extreme temperatures on the face of the planet there's very few things that beat nematodes out for survival. Like, put it into perspective, if there was a nuclear blast or a bomb went off, nematodes would survive. Most of everything else would be gone, nematodes would survive. So, I'm so happy. Okay, so I'm gonna say this right now. Everyone in the comment section are like the, you guys are the loyal, I'm here for every video type subscribers i'm so happy we're all in the same place at the same time <laughs> it makes me so joyous it's like oh my god all my favorites are all in one uh how do you re reuse soil do you reuse soil if so how do you revitalize it so i do reuse my any idea how they're packaged in those balls i don't know how they do that no idea Yeah, I could do reviews on uh, plant identification apps. That's not a not an issue. That's a good idea, actually, for a video. I didn't see the ball drop on it. Oh, that makes two of us. Jay Slowies. I tried. I tried watching CNN, but I was so sick of the Zoom style meetings. I was no. I'm over it. I'm over it. Uh, okay, so revitalizing soil. So yeah, I do have a video on it um like someone mentioned what i do is i take a swimming pool <laughs> for children like the plastic ones and i fill it up with all my potting soil from the year before and i let it sit there and i will put uh, amendments into it so i'll take a look at what's going on with it but for the most part all i'm doing is actually just put manure in cow manure specifically um so i'll put in manure so for an entire one of those swimming pools i'll put in a bag um if i'm feeling extra i may put more i typically don't because i do fertilize inorganically for my potted plants it's just the way i like to do things i also do not add more perlite or any sort of aeration to it or drainage to help with drainage and this is particular to me and my choice so the reason for my insanity and in not adding perlite or pumice or anything to my outdoor plant potting soil is actually because while i'm in a climate that's very very cold i'm also in a climate that gets very very hot um, almost desert like at times so because of that my pots will dry out very quickly and any extra aeration actually works to not, not to my benefit. So what I will do is I will add mostly manure. Um, I may add, uh, depending, probably once every three years, I'll actually just put in straight peat moss, like just a newer uh, peat moss. And the reason for that is because it just has a little bit more structure to it. And other than that, that's all I put in. One thing you could do if you're in an area with higher humidity, less heat, less sun, um, you could add in sand. That's one thing that you could add into it, which will help with drainage um, and that sort of thing. But very, very basic. I just, I, I literally just fluff it up. That's all I do. There's no reason to throw it out. If your soil smells, like if it smells rotten, then there's no, there's no reason to even throw that out. That's just stuff that's degrading and it's probably actually very high in ammonia. 
um, which is what is causing kind of that, that acidic scent. And that's actually part of the nitrogen cycle. And that's just one form of nutrient or one stage of chemical decomposition before it turns into something that's actually usable for your plants like nitrates and nitrites. So it's not a bad thing, that smell. It's just you, it is acidic. So you're gonna wanna just put in some new stuff to help fluff it up and make it a little bit better for your plants, your plant roots, that sort of thing. So never throw anything out like that. You can always, always keep doing it. Kitty pool, pool brilliant. Honestly, it's like my best friend sitting out there in a snowbank right now, actually. Any recommendations on humidifiers? I have one from Air Carrot. I feel like I'm constantly having to change out the wick. Oh, so I don't have any humidifiers. And the reason for that is because I have a fish tank and my fish tank actually keeps my humidity up pretty high in my um, room where I have all my plants. Now, one thing I will say, and I could be wrong here, that there are plant humidifiers, which are very expensive right now because they're, they're trendy plant stuff, which is fine. Um, but you could just use any sort of humidifier. Um, I'm doing a video, it's be coming out next week because I filmed it a few days ago, but it's on Calatheas Maranta's, uh, Stromanthes, like high humidity plants, why they need the humidity, all that stuff. So I don't want to give away too much there, but essentially all humidity is, is uh, water, the percent mass of water in your air. So, and that's completely determined based on the temperature actually. So the out, the indoor temperature and then the pressure as well will alter your percentage. So the colder your house is, the lower your ambient percentage for moisture is going to be. Um, the higher heat your home is, the higher the ambient temperature for your house is going to, or the uh, humidity is going to be. So, I'm not sure what you run your house at, but that may be a factor. Um, and then the other thing is, is that the way that they get the moisture in the air through humidifiers, it's, it's just super, they call it supersonic heated or uh, vibrated water. So you could use anything, like you could use a humidifier from the drugstore that you use when you have a cough and a cold, that's gonna do and react the exact same way actually. So you could try that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure because where you are too, you're in BC, right? Try, uh, site true seeker. I'm pretty sure you're in, you're in BC. So like you're also at a different pressure entirely. I would look into that. I would look into your house temperature. Um, that sort of thing, how dry your house is. Cause I know that's a huge issue. I don't have that problem here, despite being in a very, or you're in San Diego. Why did I think you were a PC? San Diego, so you're in, okay, so you're right by the ocean too. How is your, how's your house not humid? Is it cause you're by a desert? That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. And the one I have is supposed to cover our whole house and it's still running out. Wow. That's insane. I got nothing for you. I'm not sure. That's wild. Have you tried a fan or anything like that? Yeah, that's crazy to me. I, I would call them and ask, like if it's supposed to do a certain amount of square footage and it's not, that's a slight bit of an issue. Like I know like for my house, for example, I have one that's on the furnace, like it's directly attached to my forced air furnace. Um, and I've never had any issues. It has like a little dial on the wall and I turn the dial. I know the temperature in my house will affect the overall percentage, but yeah, that's crazy. By the ocean in San Diego with a huge, yeah. You, can we keep the ceiling fan on? Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. I do not know what your issue is. 
That's insane. Because I have uh, one girl who who commented um, or she DM'd me on Instagram and she was saying how her humidifier in her house wasn't working at all or how she'd have kind of like dead spots or dry spots and she had multiples of them running. Um, and so I told her to turn on a fan, like to turn fans onto it and it made a, a big difference and actually solved her issue. The only thing I can say is heat. Like what are you running your house at? Do you have AC? running in San Diego. I don't know how warm it is there right now. I'm sure if I was there, I'd be butt naked on a beach somewhere because I mean, I'm in very cold temperatures all the time. So I think everything is warm where you are, but are you running AC? Or are you running heat? Like what's, that's the only thing I can think of because pressure and temperature, are the two things that affect your ambient moisture. And the one I have is supposed to cover a whole place. Okay. This is going to be the last question from Bonnie. Have you seen those digital microscopes for phones? They're cool. I've been using to, uh, yes, I have seen those. <laughs> so there was one time I did see it was, um, who was using it? There was a YouTuber using it and she was using it on her plant leaves. Um, I was actually, what I was looking for was a, blue tooth microscope that would record on my phone while I looked at soil amendments or soil or uh, plants, plant diseases, all that stuff underneath a microscope, um, fungi, bacteria, like I wanted to do all that stuff. So if you guys have any recommendations for microscopes that would work at that intensity, like I need probably like a thousand times would be kind of the ballpark I'd be looking for, but I actually want to use that to help me make videos. I wanted to take videos of like mycorrhizal fungi. I wanted to take uh, videos like of a microscope of legumes. So like the nodulations on legume plants, um, rhizobium bacteria. Like I wanted to look at all that stuff with you guys this summer and just really get like close up views and footage of that sort of thing. But it's, not looking good. Like I can get my hands on a regular microscope from the university and get just a, a normal one where I can see cellulose and I can see cool structures of plants, but I can't show you because it doesn't, it's just my eyeballs recording. What I need is I need Bill Gates to put a microchip in my eyeball so I can just like tap twice on my temple and it'll just record whatever the microscope sees. That's what I need. Yes, it's it's um yeah it's a microscope it's like a pen it literally looks like a pen mine was 35 dollars yeah and i'm sure bonnie's is like it's a pen type looking thing yeah it's cool but it doesn't have the magnification i want i want it to really zoom in and look okay i feel better because i was thinking about calling <laughs> yeah no oh your water's too hard that's what um if your water's too hard, so what I will tell you is if they're telling you your water's too hard, you're going to have salt buildup. So you're going to have like a crust that's building up inside the tank reservoir or on top of the, there should be like a metal disc in there. And on top of that metal disc, if you pull that out, there's going to be like crusties on that or it's going to look discolored or kind of foggy if that's the case then your water is too hard i have a it's called a repti fogger it's not going to do your house i promise you that the only humidifier i own is a repti fogger and that disc will become discolored if my water is too hard or if i'm not using distilled water but that should take months to build up like it shouldn't cavitate your humidifier within just a few months so yeah, that's what I would do. I would call them. Okay, I think we're done. We're almost at an hour. I want to thank you guys so much for turning out. Honestly, I thought there was going to be like two people, but there we got up to 20 at one point, I'm pretty sure. So if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. If this is something that you guys enjoyed, then this may be something we'd be able to do on a, on a semi-regular basis. Um, keep up the conversation. I'm sure you can for a little bit anyways. I'm not sure what's going to happen when I hit this exit button, but 
Jack is sitting here cleaning himself this entire time. He's just been chilling like a villain. He's like, yeah, hi. He's been so quiet. I thought for sure he was going to be bad <laughs> this whole time. It was a ton of fun. It was. I have like all my favorite people in one spot right now. So this makes me so, so happy. Um, thank you so much for watching. Have a very happy new year. It's 2021. We're finally done with the crazy. Hopefully, knock on wood. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you could all meet each other in one place. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.